Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Follow the links in the description below. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving and welcome to the barn. And today I'm taking a day off from making an awful lot of mess with the old Mini. And I'm gonna have a look at Hippo the Freelander, which is still tucked away in the corner of the barn. It's now on sawn because basically it's going no place with no brakes. So it's saving a few quid a month. This thing's 34 pounds a month to tax. Can you believe that? There's no justice in the world. Um, so yeah, this is off the road for a little while. Been looking at the rear brakes, obviously in the previous video when the car nearly burnt to the ground, which is not the best day in the world. Um, but having seen that, I've kind of decided that it's probably best to give all the brakes an overhaul, check everything out entirely. I'm gonna take a tactical decision and ignore the drum brakes on the back right now because drum brakes are kind of my nemesis. I absolutely hate them. Um, so I'm gonna ignore that for a little while. But I think basically we're gonna to have to overhaul and replace most of the rear drum brakes on this thing just to get it happy again. Meanwhile though, I have been doing a little bit of shopping and I've acquired from Comline. We have got new shiny lovely brake discs. Oh God, I'm stuck shut, I can't open it. Whoops. I've got these from the motor factors. We've got a pair of lovely vented brake discs for the front of the car, which look very nice indeed. We've also got matching Comline brake pads for the front of the car, which is good. And now I don't know if we're gonna need this or not, but we have got a caliper. I ordered a matching pair of these. So I'm not sure if we're gonna need calipers or not because given the state of the rear brakes, I'm a little concerned that we might need front calipers as well. So, um, so let's hope we don't need them. Let's crack on and try and make this thing be, well, a bit safer. Because at some point in the next couple of months, either Mrs. Furious is gonna take this on a camping trip with her canoe friends and wants the car to be nice and safe and I want it to be nice and safe for her, or I'm gonna stick it uh, for sale and I want the next person to be safe as well. I would also call on myself to be safe. I'm funny that way. Right, let's put the back wheel on and slop it out backwards and have a look at the front brakes on this thing. I know it's not a significant addition to the garage, but this little holder for the radio remote control is possibly the best thing I've put in here, along with the radio itself. That's so convenient. Now, although this barn has many great things going for it, one thing it doesn't is being fully watertight. In this corner, the water runs off the land straight into it, and because there are sheep on that land, that water actually smells a bit whiffy. Um, not 100% ideal. I would quite like to move to a different barn, but this does have the big advantage that it is monumentally cheap. Ow, that's, how's that sharp? How have got a sharp edge on a wheel lug? That's unusual. So we'll put up with the sheep wee smelling water. At least it gives us somewhere to come in out of the rain. Right, let's have a look at this and get some bulldog on all the fittings because I've never taken this apart before. But yeah, it's a bit of a lip on the disc, not too bad. And the pads are about halfway worn, but I wanna make sure that everything is tip top. So I'm gonna give a good inspection to all the rubber hoses, all the solid lines. It passed an MOT recently, but I just wanna be doubly, doubly sure. And this front strut here was an advisory last year uh, for a slight weeping of fluid, which I guess means it's lost all its fluid now because it doesn't seem to be doing it anymore. Um, yeah, and this area here, I did just kind of red oxide paint this whole area but it's all in the inner arch needs to come out and be fully painted as well. But brakes today, so these flexi lines look all right. I do not want to ever try and undo them because they look like they're gonna fight to the death as does, well, everything here in fact. The bleed point looks hopelessly useless there as well. And everything else looks really crusted in. So let's get a bit of bulldog on this and uh, hope for the best. Hopefully, I'm only gonna have to undo a couple of pins. And I do have the slight advantage today that I've not got to worry about bleeding this today because the rear calipers or rear drums still need sorting out. So I can just whack it all together without bleeding, which is quite handy. Although I did bring the full-on Draper bleeding kit set up in case I got adventurous. Right, I'm just gonna start with a nice easy one, just taking the pads out, which should mean just undoing these two bolts here, which are 12 millimeters. That flexi is very much in the way though, so I'm not quite sure how we'll work our way around that, but we'll figure something out. It is all soaked in bulldog, so hopefully it'll oh, come undone easily. Okay, so not 12 millimeter, it's just loads of crust on it. Is that the situation? There is, I should say, an axle stand underneath the chassis rail of the car as well, and the jack is still in place too, so it is very well supported in here. 
Okay, that one's coming apart. Hooray, that's all right, good old Bulldog. Thank you, BDX Club. Yeah, that one feels like it's the wrong size. Let's try an 11 on that. No, it's not an 11, it's just been rounded, which is what I love, of course. Put more fluid on it. I can see this becoming one of those jobs, even though it's literally two bolts there and two screws there and should be an hour or two's work. This is gonna be just an absolute nightmare. Right, so I've just gone and fished the, the mallet out the back of the, uh, the Mini, and if you're old enough to remember 911, and I never thought I'd be saying words along those lines, old enough to remember 911, um, if you remember seeing pictures of New York post the fall, that's basically what everything in the Mini looks like right now. Lefty, loosey, tighty, righty. Hang on. Yeah. I always doubt myself when I do this, especially if I'm on camera. Wait a minute, am I doing this the right way around? Come on, undo, damn you. Just twisting off, oh my god. This car, this car is a bit of a liability, honestly. Just twisting off again. My blooming nightmare. I mean, the fact this entire front end looks like it's been dredged up from the bottom of the English Channel, does not help the situation. Right, let's have a quick uh, rethink on this. While I'm letting the uh, Bulldog soak in there, I've already pre-soaked these things, uh, things, screws. So I'm really hoping that they will come undone. Bloody hell. That's unhappy to come undone. That's a combination of monstrously tight and, oh, okay, that one will come undone, phew. Let's put that to one side, because We call this percussive maintenance. That's the biggest screwdriver I can put through the, the handle of that one, so we can try and turn that with a bit of leverage. No, oh, it's doing nothing. It's gonna muller it. I don't know what the person to do to this one, what happened to the ones on the back, which caused me an absolute nightmare. I have got the heat extraction tool in the car though. Now the thing about this car is that it's only 23 years old, which in my book is relatively modern. So to my mind, I should be able to just get in and drive it pretty much anywhere. And maintenance should be like easy, just a matter of putting a spanner on things and they come undone. Not like dealing with a car that's 40 or 50 years old where you anticipate everything is gonna be a grief session where you've got to fight literally everything to try and get anything done. So it always comes as an unfortunate surprise when I try and do anything on this car and it turns into three days of bashing it with a hammer and having to get the special tools out. I am of course not using the blowtorch in here ever again under any circumstances because as we said previously, fire bad. I can see the bulldog bubbling around the edge of the screw at this point. I actually did have a bunch of screwdriver-like tips that would fit into the holder and go on a half-inch drive so I could stick them on the impact wrench. I've no idea where they've gone. Let's see if that's anywhere near done. Oh, no. No, I thought it was, what was it? It was just twisting it. It's hot, but it's not hot enough. If you're interested in this tool, I admit it is a couple hundred pounds, but it's definitely worth it. Hit the link in the description below to the Amazon affiliate store where you can find these things, along with all the other tools that I'm using. Mostly it's all Draper stuff, because it does tend to be pretty decent things. Whoops. No. No. Damn it, come on. Well, good news, that completely failed. Everything that would normally get a thing undone has completely failed to get that undone. So now I'm gonna go onto the stuck bolts up here on the, the caliper ca pad carrier as well. Um, let's see if we can break that instead, because there's less mass around that one. The sheer bulk of the, the brake disc makes undoing those things very hard indeed. This is a much smaller thing in a smaller component, so it's got much hotter and much faster. You can see the smoke coming off it after just a couple of seconds. I think I might have to resort to an angle grinder or something on that other one. No, it's winding off again. God, this is impossible. Oh, the heat off this thing is just insane. 
Meanwhile, the flexi hose just behind it is still completely cool because it's not made of metal. The 11 millimeter is literally hammered on there. It is boiling hot. Let's see if we can turn this thing. Oh, come on. Yes, I think, no, maybe. Oh, come on. Ah, oh, yes. Finally, Jesus. And remember, as I always say this, don't touch the bolt after you've red hotified it with the uh, machine. God, they're short. I thought it was gonna be a really long bolt. That's the, the pads free. Oh, I've left the hanger behind. I do actually have a proper hanger for this thing and a compressor as well to, to squeeze the duhar back in again. Now I just need to get the uh, disc jibbery out there. Might need extreme violence. I don't have a drill up here because the last resort generally with this kind of thing is to drill out the head of it. Um, but I do have an angle grinder. So I think the next resort or last resort is gonna be being very careful not to touch either of these wheel bug bolts. Just get that in there and grind the top of this bolt off. Obviously I'm gonna use hand protection, eye protection and ear protection doing this. Right, is that free-ish? <coughs> Handy thing to put a torch on is that big hammer. Now, um, is this free? Yes it is, I just need to uh, release the two big bolts on the back of it which I'd kind of forgotten about. And the caliper carrier bolts, which I guess are gonna be what, 15 millimeter probably? Let's find out. Right, will this come undone? Oh my gosh, no it will not. Where is the impact wrench? A bit more bulldog. You know you get to a point in a job where you just kind of, not so much lose interest, just lose any sympathy for any of the components. I don't know why, the camera stopped, but the bottom one just whoops straight out on the impact wrench. Now let's try the impact on the top one. Oh good, it's rounding it. That's what I'd like to find. Do I have a 14 that I can hammer on there? No, that's too tight still. Oh, I hate this car. Right, I've got these super grippy multi-drive things from Draper, which will fit on there. I'm hoping with that wedged on there, I might be able to free this thing off. I have put a load of lube on it as well. This thing is, it looks like it's been in the bottom of the sea and there was Loctite type stuff, thread seal on these things as well. So, yes, thank you. So I'm gonna have to buy a new one of those bolts and probably a new car caliper carrier bolt as well. But that does mean now that can come off and the disc can come away. Why won't the disc come away? I've held on my dirt as far as I can tell. Hammer. Come on you so-and-so. So one old disc, that can go into my recycling pile. For the weigh-ins. Ow, that hurt me ears. Look at the amount of stuff coming off this. This is literally just the car falling apart around me. Oh, dear me. Now I know whenever I do anything on, on Freelanders, people go, oh, the Freelanders are terrible. They're a really badly designed car. They're not a really badly designed car. They're actually a pretty cleverly designed car. The problem is, this one's been driven to the sea a couple of times as far as I can tell. And the, uh, that bleed is completely bunged up. I'm not gonna be able to bleed that because that is just solid. Very much doubt I'll even better undo it. I mean, I would consider replacing the entire caliper, but I doubt I'll get that uh, flexi out of there. So I need to go and buy a new bleed screw for it as well. New discs and pads. This Comline stuff, it feels really nicely made. Available from all good bookshops, sorry, uh, car spares shops. A viewer did send me some handy uh, caliper hangers in junk in the trunk a little while ago. Unfortunately, I don't have them here. They're in the garage at home. There we go. So the, uh, the, the sawn off bolt can stay where it is. The little one that's not rusty, I'll put some, uh, some copper slip on so it's not destroyed for next time. Now I forgot to bring a G-clamp. There's always something I forget when I come over here and do a bit of filming. This morning's first thing I forgot was a battery for the camera, so I had to go home and get that first of all. Uh, now I've realized I've not got a G-clamp for compressing 
the piston back in. But what I've realized I can do is I can use the piston itself and a big spanner to get leverage. So by pushing this through here and using the piston body itself as a fulcrum, I can then push down on the rim of the, the piston and use a big spanner and push in various points through the thing to push down with it and compress the piston down. Ha ha, genius, I tells thee, genius. And then I should better get the new piston the pads in. And astonishingly, that has actually worked really well. Now, unlike uh, certain suppliers, um, whose parts I've used in the past, <coughs> you're a cup parts, um, these Comline ones are actually fitting perfectly first time. So there, wow, perfect. I put a spot of brake grease on the back of the pads and on the ends to stop any uh, squeaking. I think what I'm gonna do is do these up, but not massively tightly, because I'm gonna see if I can get some new bolts and replace these rather than risk trying to get them undone again in the future, because that will be an absolute blooming nightmare. Right, that is now all done. And don't you just love it when a job that should take about 15 to 20 minutes manages to take two or three hours? Absolutely soul crushing. Of course, the last thing you do is give it a good clean up with the braking clutch, just the wheel to go back on. Now, you might have noticed I didn't pre-clean these discs before I mounted them. And that's because these common line discs come ready to use straight out the bag. They're not covered in like a wax coating like in the old days you would have uh, had to clean off before you fitted them. These ones are just ready to go straight out the box. Now the question is, do I have the moral fortitude, the strength, the, the wherewithal, do I give enough of a crap to change the other ones as well this morning? Because that should have taken about 15 minutes and it's now after lunch. I hate rusty bolts, they're the best. Right, so I've doused these bolts and things in lots and lots of bulldog and gone and had a little kind of tea break, lunch snack break. Don't forget, merch store for the furious driving mugs, the uh, various ceramics, which are rather lovely. And of course the tin hippo mugs, if you're going camping and outdoorsing in a rusty truck like this. Um, so the thing is, whether or not I carry on and finish this or go home and ignore it, depends on whether or not these two screws will come undone. Because I really don't fancy having to angle grind a screw out again. That's just silly, really. Get the rhythm section going. Yes, one free. Oh, ho, ho. Now I've very much worked myself into a corner back here because I'm kind of running out of room in the, in the shed. Now, come on. Yes! Oh my goodness. What are the chances of that? Will this be the fabled 20 minute disc and pad change? Let's hope so. Now, what other sort of tools do I need? Oh, I need to turn the steering wheel, don't I? Oh, I'm in the wrong side of the car. Hold on. Oh, once again, the camera wasn't rolling and I don't know what you missed. But basically, the top bolt of the caliper carrier, that just came out, well, not exactly like butter, but the, rent, the impact wrench did the business. The bottom one doesn't want to play. Also, the caliper itself, the little 12 millimeter bolt on the bottom, that just flew straight out. The top one I can't get a tool onto because the flexi hose is rooted, well, appears to be rooted ever so slightly differently. So I was gonna try and get an extreme purchase on this bottom bolt. Everything is in the way. Ouch. Come on, free. Yes, I think that's free. Enormous torque does the trick again. All right, so the caliper carrier is free. I'm hoping now I can wiggle it all off there and get slightly better access. There we go, onto that caliper carrier bolt, the 12 millimeter, and actually get past the flexi. I can't, no, good, excellent. No, that's too small, that's an 11. Where's the 12? Oh, it's a 13 for some reason, okay. That's always handy. Just random size changes all the time. Let's hope this one is happy to come undone as well. Yay! I shouldn't sound so surprised at a really basic maintenance procedure going as it, as it should do, but this is this car and this is me, so. <clears throat> Here we go, oh my goodness, way, there goes the Cali pack carrier, complete with the pads that so we can go in the bin. I've got the lever that back in in a second, but I'll use the old disc as my levering point this time. 
are the big spanners. So yeah, this was such a cool little trick which worked absolutely perfectly. Big spanner, where are you? You're a big spanner. Oh, you're a big spanner. Oops. Right, so in lieu of a G-clamp or an actual brake compressor, this does appear to be doing the trick. And normally you pop the bonnet and uh, just check the top of the uh, brake fluid reservoir. Fortunately, all my brake fluid is on the floor, so it's not actually gonna be an issue. So here we go. Another fresh new Commoline disc, which was minty clean till I got my grubby gloves on it. I must go get some new gloves. And as I say with the other one, because they are shipped and treated differently to the old school ones, you don't need to worry about spending a while polishing all of the, uh, the shipping wax off them. Now these gloves, these are Draper 65822 gloves, which are really, really good. Unfortunately, I've worn them so much, they're now actually more filthy than most of the things I'm touching. And the camera battery is about to die, so I'm gonna quickly reassemble this with the camera turned off. And we are done, and that took about half an hour, as this particular job probably should take, if you're just working at home. Nice, neat job. I have not talked everything to spec, but I'm gonna look at replacing all of this hardware with new stuff. When I order the bits for the other side, I'll order the spares for this side and just replace all the nuts and bolts just because everything's just been such a pain. I don't want it to be a repeat pain ever in the future. And I've got to say, I've not used this Conline stuff before, but that was so impressively easy. I mean, you expect stuff to work perfectly and be sort of first fit straight in. And this was. <laughs> I shouldn't sound surprised, but these days it's amazing what doesn't always fit. And apart from taking the old stuff off, that was the doddle of a job I hoped it'd be. And also the... Uh, Flexies and hard lines on this side look decent as well. So I've got a little bit of shopping to do to put this back together in terms of the front brakes and a lot of shopping to do in terms of the back brakes because I'm sort of tempted to change the rear cylinder over on this side at the back as well, just as a precaution. But having had one explode on that side, it may now be the weak point is gonna be the cylinder on this side as well. And I'm not quite sure where the rock and roll kind of dodginess in that rear wheel cylinder on the driver's side is coming from, because if you recall that previous episode, it fits up okay, but as you tighten up, it seems to go onto the wonk, and then it pulls the bleed thingy through the hole in the back of the back plate, but it doesn't look like the back plate is bent, so I think corrosion may be an issue there. So I guess a new back plate, and probably a few other, other bits and pieces, new, new shoes I think would be a good idea preventative maintenance. The shoes have been soaked in brake fluid anyway. And the one, the front one looks all right, the back one, the trailing one looks a bit meh. So I'll do both the rear drums, all new rear shoes. I'll change the other cylinder as well. This car is just, I say the gift that keeps on giving, the money pit that keeps on giving. But anyway, right, so I'll put the wheel back on and I'm done. And this video is finished for now. Maybe at some point in the near future, I'll be able to drive this car again. I know Mrs. F is desperate to go and stick the roof tint on it and go off on some canoeing trip with her friends. Um, so yeah, I need to get it sorted out really, don't I? Anyway, thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, please hit like and subscribe. If you like to look at this Comline stuff, check out your local motor factors because you'll find it in there. I'm done. I need, I need yet more coffee, I think. And a cake, I definitely want a cake after this one.